Now, today we're talking about how women are being bullied and threatened and mistreated by an a group of activists who are claiming to be oppressed and marginalized. Mm -hmm. They're they're kind of, you know, like a typical bully using tech mm -hmm. to undermine our confidence and our rights and our protections. Yeah, so just this week, unfortunately, um, there is a trans identified male uh, who is um, actually an advisor in the uh, in my parliament. Um, so this is a man who is advising uh, the um, uh, the my government on women's uh, rights and on you know um, sex workers rights and on transgender issues so um, this male he wrote um, a statement uh, saying um, you know screenshotting my name and screenshotting some of the other feminist names um, and he blacked out the names of the trans activists because he knows that doxing is wrong but my name he had no problem putting out there and he was complaining uh, because me and the other women in this group uh, of 50,000 women, uh, we were discussing uh, that men should never be put in women's prisons. And the comment that I had said, which he felt was necessary to screenshot, I said, no, men can never become women, never. That was my comment. He which, said- Which is scientifically true. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he said, um, th these types of women exist in the KKK. And he then um, seems to think that me and these other women who are concerned about women in prison, uh, we're responsible uh, for murder and suicide. And even more shockingly, uh, one of his uh, friends uh, commented on his post, which was defaming and doxing, uh, myself and the other women, uh, this, this individual wrote, these are women that I wouldn't even gang rape, uh, I wouldn't touch in a gang rape, okay, and then he, he liked that comment, so, and, and this is everyday bullying, right, this is everyday regular, you know, um, stuff that we get, and I find it incredibly ironic that this man decided to screenshot me um, being upset at the idea of one of his Trans identified male, you know, people being in my in a women's prison, and then he does this. You know, it's it's un it, it's unbelievable. You know that that we are discussing men in women's prisons, which is something which may be be happening. You know, they're petitioning to to put um, men in women's prisons here, and all we're doing is saying no, absolutely not. And then for that, we need to be doxed. Uh, accused of Nazi affiliation and that you know you know Nazi ideology, which is really you know dangerous because um, I don't need to tell you that if you're seen I don't know with a swastika or seen somebody's accusing you of being a Nazi, it really you know so somebody could come and just beat you up. You know this is like we're we're living in a in a you know we can't imagine. First of all, we're women. So um, when, when a man is laughing about gang raping me and, you know, or, or whatever, I do take that, I tend to take that pretty seriously. Um, and I take it even more seriously when he's employed by my government. It's yes. just mind blowing. Yeah. And that's, that's an important distinction as this is a government employee, which makes it yeah. more horrific. But, yeah. but I do see this regularly. And, and as you mentioned, this is what's concerning is that I see women who disagree with men. So basically you're stating a scientific fact or mm -hmm. a belief system. Either one is valid. It's okay to disagree with people. Yeah. But in a particular narrative, if you disagree with them, first of all, they say you're um, part of the KKK, you're a Nazi. And of course we all, uh, we all know that Nazis are evil and therefore should be killed, hurt, maimed, yeah. raped. And so they sort of justify they're making these claims by calling us Nazis. I find that disturbing on so many levels. One of them is that it's minimizing what happened, what the Nazis did. It's really minimizing what they did. Um, you, you making a statement uh, about how you feel or a scientific statement is nothing, nothing compared to what the Nazis did. 
is not even like, you can't even compare that. Um, and, but then to suggest that you are a Nazi um, and, and to be called a Nazi is it's, um, it's dangerous because as, as you very know, dangerous, people, yeah. Nazis, people want Nazis dead. And, well, so and, if he, and if he said that you're like part of the KKK, the KKK is all men, as I understand it. <laughs> It's all men. There are no women yeah. in the KKK. They're not part of it. But well, the whole yeah. being, being um, willing to rape, to kill, because we've seen lots of death threats, mm -hmm. this fully illustrates that this is a cult because mm -hmm. this is one of the things that cults do. If you are mm -hmm. not part of the cult, you are not one of the chosen, you are a heretic, you are mm -hmm. evil, you should die. You have no right to exist. Mm -hmm. and, and we see this all the time. If you don't buy into the trans ideology, you don't have a right to exist. You don't have a right to be safe. And I've seen um, the other thing that they do, I forgot to make this jump, is that they, they say that anybody who disagrees with them is a um, trans exclusionary radical feminist or a turf. And those who are watching this have probably heard this, but maybe not. Because, you know, if you're pretty new to this, you may not know what a turf is. And um, they have equated a turf with all the evils in the world, you know, um, saying that we're as bad as Hitler, saying that we're as bad as the KKK. Um, and so your experience is not isolated, Alex. Um, most of us who have been in this have very ordinary, very ordinary. I wanted to mm -hmm. read. Um, some of the threats that I got, um, let me see the first one. Um, these are both from somebody who's local, who um, actually, you know, is close enough to me that they could actually have carried these out. The first one says, can we please do something to hurt this transphobic fascist fuck for the damage she's doing in our community and for her contribution to genocide? Okay, I'm responsible for genocide because I'm trying to protect children from being medicalized. Um, like, where does she work? Is she renting? Can we get her kicked out? I want this fucker ruined, okay? This is actually um, a, man, a, ma a young man who went to school with my children, who I, I knew as a child, who was, who was anything but um, transgender. He was, you know, a bouncy boy. His mother actually contacted me after he posted this and suggested I contact the police because she was scared for me. Um, this is another one of his posts. It says, you best get the fuck out of my town. You trans with your transphobic bullshit, you are contributing to our goddamn genocide with how you mock and degrade trans kids. Again, this claim of genocide, um, which is just outrageous. You start yeah. accusing people of genocide. I mean, that's, that's an amazing claim. <laughs> Well, and well, I've I think never it's... heard you mock anybody. I've never heard you mock even a TRA. You're one of the most yeah. even-handed, even-keeled, and you have very simple goals, protect children from medicalization. Mm -hmm. And yeah. now that's being equated with genocide. Well, so increasingly what we see, um, well, no, this has been... So this has been the narrative, I think, for a couple of years, is that if, if we resist in any way and suggest that transitioning a three-year-old or a six-year-old or socially transitioning a five-year-old is, is not done and it's not done immediately, then we are responsible 100% for suicide. Right. and that we are causing the deaths of tens of thousands of millions of billions of, of uh, trans-identified children. I mean, the claims are so ridiculous yeah. and so not based in reality because um, there is not mass suicides of children uh, taking place. Uh, in the UK, um, of course, it's totally tragic whenever a child is upset or is harming themselves, but only one has uh, has committed suicide that has been on a on a pathway um, to transition. Mm -hmm. So these claims are really qu quite ridiculous um, that we are causing uh, the suicide of, of children. And I particularly felt that um, what was directed at J.K. Rowling after yeah. she wrote her essay. Yeah, let me read this her quote. essay. Yeah, yeah. One of the quotes somebody said. This is a, I believe he was a, a, a professor at a university wrote, Rowling need, needs severe punishment by way of traumatic vaginal injury as poetic justice. This is, this is horrifying that somebody would make a threat like this. And this person got tons of likes. These people are threatening us, us with bodily injury. Um, 
can you think of any other civil rights movement that was able to do this, that was able to treat mm -hmm. women in such a derogatory way, that was able to mm -hmm. make threats and call names? To me, this all just reeks of um, misogyny in a way that, yeah. um, like in any other situation, if men were treating women like this, people would be up in arms. But for some reason in this case, because these men happen to say they identify as a woman, all of a sudden all bets are off and they can get away with anything. Well, and if mm -hmm. you read Dr. Martin Luther King's letter from a Birmingham jail, where he outlines how the, the civil rights movement was, was progressing and what they were doing, um, they were very cautious. They were very respectful. Um, they were very um, civilly responsible, civically responsible. And it makes me so angry to see the trans rights movement saying that they're the same as the as the black civil rights movement no no their, their movement is a movement of oppression they are actively mm -hmm. trying to silence and oppress women i mean yeah i'm gonna read a few other of these um it says uh if you don't think this is from a trans identified man if you don't think i'm allowed to use women's oh, restrooms oh. because i'm transgender mm -hmm. i will come to your house and shit down your throat I mean, this is just like, who says these kind of things and how are they so emboldened to feel okay mm -hmm. about saying these things to women? We're trying mm -hmm. to advocate for children and this is how we're treated. Yeah. And I, I think also it's important to, to kind of mention um, uh, what happened to Mike Bailey uh, after he, he wrote his book. I mean, I, I just want to say that we're not fright, we're not um, threatened over people tweeting on the internet. We're, you know, I want to remind everybody just uh, about uh, Dr. Mike Bailey. He wrote a book called The Man, the Man Who Would Be Queen. And it was depicting, um, you know, Blanchard's theory that there are two types of, of transsexuals, the homosexual transsexual and the autogynophile uh, transsexuals. And he this Dr. Bailey um, likes this population very much. He liked them. They were his patients. Uh, he very much liked all of the men that he treated, and he decided to write a book about case studies. With their permission. And with their permission. With their express permission. Express permission. And on the cover of the, uh, on the, and again, he didn't make any value judgment about these uh, these people in his book. Never. He just wrote the stories. He just wrote about them. And the moment his cover came out, it was a, I guess it was a provocative cover. It was, you know, um, I guess, uh, how would you explain it? A large shoe pump and the man who would be queen. Okay. They saw it. They didn't read it. They went crazy. These activists went crazy. They published Bailey's pictures of Bailey's kids online with their eyes blacked out. Um, I mean, they they ruined him. They they they. Tr I think they did manage to get him fired from his job as a scientist. Um, and it, it was it. So you know that can happen to Mike Bailey. You know who thankfully that happened at the end of his career, not at the beginning. Uh, but that could happen to any of us yes. that, you know, they could decide I'm going to put, uh, you know, pictures of Alex's pets online and, and, and her home address. You know, why not? She's a Nazi turf. Go for it. Go for it. You and know? that's the dangerous narrative of it is that, okay, here's another one. It says every single civil rights movement has resulted in bloodshed. Groups don't just move over and accept it. Once the turfs start being killed then the laws will change. They're advocating yeah. for anybody who oh. disagrees with them to be killed. And what's happening is that people are afraid to speak out because they see this. I've talked to numerous healthcare professionals who 100% who agree with me, but will mm -hmm. never take a stand because they're afraid of what will happen mm -hmm. to them. If people are being silenced and the only information that's getting out there is, 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 is supporting their belief system, we're in real trouble as a society. And, and again, the media is as, as afraid because if they print something that is in some way conceived to be anti-transgender, they will be attacked. And so as yeah. a whole society, really, those of us who are speaking out about this are taking huge risks. And 
um, I'm not entirely sure how we motivate people to speak out about this when there, when there is this kind of acceptance of violence and threats and doxing and, um, you know, piling on to get people fired. Well, there was this 16 year old boy, I can't remember his name, 16 year old boy who published a video on TikTok where he said, I'm coming up with a new, a new sexuality. I'm super straight. I'm super oh, yeah. straight. Mm -hmm. I only like biologically, you know, girls who are born girls. The trans rights activist sent death threats to his mother, to his mm -hmm. mother. And he mm -hmm. took that down because he's scared. Yeah. We can't, we can't accept this. We can't accept this. People look back at what happened in Germany in the 30s and 40s and say, oh, if I was there, I would not have let that happen. I would have spoken up. Well, now's your time. Yeah, now's your time is. because it's happening now to, to us. Yeah, it's happening. I, that's the thing that they fear the most is actually just our voices. That's what they fear. Um, you know, that this is why I'm hesitant really to release apologies. Uh, and, you know, if if for whatever reason my comments about men being put in women's prisons have offended people, I'm not going to apologize for it. Um, you know, because it's that once you apologize, you actually cannot backtrack on it. And there's no reason for us to apologize. And obviously. we've seen that. But we've that's seen that where people have, you know, celebrities have said something kind yeah. of that they didn't, you know, Stupid. that wasn't yeah. part of the um, party line that was somehow a little bit offensive to somebody. And boy, mm -hmm. they get piled on and then they come out meekly and they're like, I'm so sorry, I didn't know, you know, this yeah. is horrible. This is all a lie. This is all founded on a movement that is empowering male violence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And and also I think um, that the what is really horrifying as well is, is the media complicity is the fact that the only people who are ever particularly interested in speaking to us about the phenomenon of being uh, of, of children being transitioned are right-wing media sources and Christian media sources. So it's, it's very frustrating because people say, you know, that it's an echo chamber. It's like, well, we didn't make it that way. We want we want the socialists to come and speak to us. We want the uh, whatever organization the men's rights activists, I don't care. Ah, yeah, come for us. Come. Press anybody to cover this, but they will not because they're mm -hmm. afraid. So here's another tweet. It says, trans women are women, trans men are men. Turf and racist are not derogatory terms. Punch a turf in the face like you would a Nazi. Again, it's equating us with Nazis. We, as women, trying to stand up for our rights and protect our children are being equated to Nazis. That's just, yeah. oh, that's just so um, wrong on so many levels. And the fact that these are, the, these are the people who are garnering support rather than us, people aren't, aren't rallying. You know, when, all, when I was, you know, when these threats were made against me, I reached out to the local LGBT pride center and asked them for support and they blocked me. That's what happens is that, yeah. you know, we, we are not getting support. Detransitioners are being, you know, harassed. They're not getting support. So the only narrative the general public is hearing now is these poor transgender people are being um, banned from potties, being banned from sports, being, they're being denied basic medical care. That's the narrative the general public is hearing. Yeah. And anybody who tries to say anything other than that is is now a Nazi, um, and that again, um, that's where the whole the whole Antifa movement is very disturbing. Because of course, I don't support fascists. I am like anything but a fascist. But mm -hmm. but the Antifa movement is actively trying to turn just gentle women like us, who are mothers, sisters, yeah. wives, um, trying to 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 portray us. As equivalent to what Hitler did, it's unseemly. Yeah, and it's and it's ironic yeah. that, that these trans rights activists are actually the ones who are behaving more like the Nazis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just they're just acting so they're just acting. It's not even like that. They're they're acting more sort of uh, like terrorists. I think is is easy is is probably cleaner. You know, because yeah. this is more like terrorism what they're doing it really is um, yeah it's like yeah. It's, it's definitely psychological terrorism at the very least but if, if if we're afraid to speak if, 
if people get mm-hmm. to the point where they're afraid, and again, I've talked to people who are afraid to speak out, um, mm-hmm. they're, they're controlling the public narrative. This is terrorism. Yeah. And I think as well, it's very damaging for the parents because, um, you know, we have an organization of Partners for Ethical Care where we are just bringing the facts about pediatric transition and the, and the idea, we're putting the idea out there that pediatric transition is not the answer and that there are people that regret their surgeries. Um, and we know that it's very difficult for people to find us. And we, because, because we've been, you know, we're, we're told that we're advocating for conversion therapy. You know, it, it's genocide. all of these ridiculous things, genocide. But I think it's so important for parents to know that we're out there and that we are with them. We support them and that we operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week, a chat line um, that will speak to the detransitioners, the brothers, the sisters, the wives, everybody who is concerned about this issue can come to us. And I think that that's important to say that we're going to be here and we're going to continue to offer this to everybody, no matter what. Yes, and that's so important. I just wanted to read one one last one. It says, if I ever find out you're a turf, I will fucking kill you. Every single turf out there needs to die. Again, this narrative that it's okay mm-hmm. to kill women. Um, mm-hmm. I also wanted to add to what you said, Alex, that we are going to be on the ground now. Yeah. Partners for Health Ethical Care is going to be demonstrating in front of gender clinics and saying, we're done. You are mm-hmm. not going to intimidate us. We are not going to live in fear. We're going to stand up against the gender industry and we are going to protect our children. And so if you're interested in protect participating in something on the ground and on the ground activism, please go to our website and, and, you know, give us your contact information. We'll be in touch because we need to stop this. Um, This is getting to the point where um, one very small segment of the population is bullying the entire population into accepting um, medical abuse of children um, is accepting the threats against women, bullying of women, harassing of women, taking away of women's rights and protections. We need to stand up against this. Yeah. And I think it just one, one more important thing, you know, if anybody is uh, concerned or has a child that's caught up in this, come to Partners for Ethical Care. Um, if you're too afraid to pick up the phone, we have chat, we have email, we have anonymous submissions, you know, there's so many ways to, to get in touch with us and that we do want to hear from you. And we're, you know, we're here, we're here. And we're going to fight back and we're going to win. We're going to protect the kids. Yeah.